Hey everybody, what is up, Wage up here, and welcome back to our video. Today, I wanted to go ahead and show you how to use Spread Players, Test4 Block, and Entity Data. I am currently at 695 subscribers, but this is being recorded the same time that the video from this last week uploaded. Um, so that would be the video on uh, Command Block Tricks. So if it seems like um, the subscriber number is a bit weird for the timing, that would be why. Um, and I don't know why I can't make my... GUI scale normal. Um, so give me just a minute. I will cut back in just a sec. All right, now that this is working, I can go ahead and start covering these commands. And the first command that we're going to go ahead and be covering is the spread players command. And I should mention these were all suggested by a user. I don't have the user's name pulled. Actually, maybe I do have the user's name pulled up right now. Let me see if I can find it. It was suggested by Evie David Rick. Sorry if I'm pronouncing that wrong. Um, uh, in the comment section. So thank you for that suggestion because it makes uh, it a lot easier when I know what to record rather than just picking random commands uh, because that is what I often have to do. Anyways, I'm going to go ahead and do now is go ahead and again cover these commands. First command is spread players. And spread players does kind of what it says it'll do. It'll spread players. Um, so what spread players does is first off you want to choose the location to spread the players around. So imagine it spreads the players in a circular area, and these x and z coordinates are going to be the center of the circle. So I'm going to do z, or I'm going to do tilde and tilde, which will actually be 52 and negative 283. It looks like, um, and it'll spread around that block. Then the spread distance. So how far do we want them to be spread around this block? I'm going to do five and six because six is the max range. That's the farthest away that the players can be spread. Respect teams. This is if you want teams to be teleported with each other. Um, so if you're something like UHC, you could go ahead and do that. So I'm going to do false because I don't need to. And then I'm going to do at A. And it's, it's successfully spread players around 52, negative 283. Now if I go ahead and change these again to 52, negative 283, you I keep running this and it will teleport me somewhere around the general area. And you notice it's kind of teleporting me in like almost a circular area around it. Um, it's not going to the very corners or anything because those are too far away. Um, but I could also then go ahead and say do is I could, um, you know, change these. So I could do it to 100 and 600 or something like that. And it actually only teleported me over here, but you can get it to teleport you, you know, all the way back here or really anywhere up to 600 blocks away. Um, and actually, sorry, I, I um, said the spread player's radius wrong earlier. What it actually is is that the first number is the minimum distance apart the players need to be, and the second number... Um, is the um, is the max radius. So, sorry about that. Um, and I just somehow ended up in my first canal carry, and I just realized actually that I should probably make mine as colorful as this one because this one looked really colorful and nice. Um, but times have definitely changed. Anyways, moving on back over to our area, if I could go ahead and find it here. The next command I believe we need to cover is uh, let's see, I'm in the right area. Um, I don't think I'm in the right area. And now I'm in the right area. Okay. The next command I wanted to go ahead and cover was test for block. Now test for block is a fairly useful thing because it lets you go ahead and test for certain information about blocks. So this is also helpful if you know block data, but if you don't know block data, that's fine. I have a video on it. Um, and it's not necessarily completely necessary to learn this command. All right. So if I go ahead and do test for block, um, First off, it'll ask for the block's location. So I'm going to say this stone button right here. And I'm going to make sure, first off, that it's a stone underscore button. And it should return to me that it did successfully find the block. Now, if it was something, uh, sorry, if you weren't able to hear me very well there, if it was something like planks, well, it's a button, not planks. So I have to change it to stone button. All right. And next, I'm going to add a data value or state or whatever. Now, something really weird I found is I haven't really perfectly figured out how to put in states. Um, I've done a lot of messing around and I can't figure out how to do it with words, but I can figure out how to do it with numbers because those are still available. So if I, oops, um, search for, and it's stone button. Um, if I search for it with a state of one, it does have a state of one true. Now state of one means that it is facing east and that it hasn't been pressed. But if I change it to nine, nothing's going to happen because it hasn't been pressed. So this is again facing east and uh, has been pressed. If I go ahead and click it right after, oops, 
that's the wrong order. I need to click it and then quickly check. And you notice it did successfully find it. If I run it now, it wasn't being pressed, so it didn't find it correctly. Um, and this can work with a bunch of different types of blocks, things like furnaces or uh, or planks or wool. Um, and it's another way to go ahead and do a sort of wireless redstone. Now, um, I'm going to read out really quick just for, for at least stone buttons for the data values because that'll just make it easier for you if you just know all them. So if it's facing east and it's unpressed, it would be 1. West and unpressed is 2. South and unpressed is 3. North and unpressed is 4. And I think like 5 or, and 6 or something would be, you know, or actually 5 would probably be like top of block. Um, and then, of course, east and pressed is 9. West and pressed is 10. South and pressed is 11. And north and pressed is 12. So um, there, what's really weird is you'd think that would work with the power thing. But when I was doing some testing, I wasn't really able to get it to work. Uh, if I just type in power to colon false, it doesn't work. If I were to add that in these things, it doesn't work. Um, if I go ahead here and add it in these things, it still doesn't work. If I add it like this, it doesn't work. Long story short, I wasn't able to get it to work no matter what I tried. But um, anyways, the last command I wanted to go ahead and cover was entity data. Now, entity data is probably one of the most useful commands um, in Minecraft because it allows you to do things like this. And actually, and along with me forgetting to uh, update this up here, I think I might have covered it back in Green Block Essentials. Let's see. Um, yeah, it actually turns out it did cover it in Green Block Essentials, so I should have told this to the person who asked. But entity data, long story short, will allow you to go ahead and edit certain um, certain entities. For example, let's take this armor stand. I'm going to go entity data at e, c equals 1. And c equals um, means the uh, closest one. And I'm going to do type equals armor, uh, armor underscore stand now. And I do that, it'll go ahead and tell me all of the information about it. So again, those curly brackets after entity data will go ahead and tell you that. So in order to use entity data, you entity data, the entity type, and then curly brackets. And inside those curly brackets, you'll go ahead and add the information you want. So for example, I want it to be, well, let's take a look. I want it to have show arms, colon 1b, because I want it to have arms. I want to have, um, let's do um, no base plate. 1B, I don't want it to have a base plate. I'm going to have, um, let's see, small 1B, so I'm going to have it nice and small. I could go ahead and change its position, but that's a bit more complicated. I could make it invulnerable, and I could make it no gravity, custom name. Let's name it Bob. I don't know. It's just a fun little random name. And you actually, there's another tag that actually makes the custom name visible, but I'm not going to deal with that right now. Anyways, here you go. Now we have a little tiny, tiny armor stand just like that with arms um, using one command. Of course, you could do other things like this, like you could make a flying pig, of course. So, where to go? Summon, or er, entity data, i.e., type equals pig, um, no gravity, 1b, um, health, 1000f. So now it has super high health. Um, and it'll go ahead and, of course, float, which is very cool. And if I don't go ahead and fall into nothingness here um, and I fly back up, you'll notice the pig is still flying just like that. Of course, because this also has incredibly high health, though, it's also going to take a while to kill. Um, or apparently not. Apparently, I, I set the health wrong. I think I would have to do a lower health because I don't think it's possible to have 1,000 whatever health. Um, or apparently I'm just, I'm just bad at life. That actually is probably what it is. Um, I know at least you could lower health for sure. Anyways, I hope you have enjoyed this video. Now, actually, I'm working on a video right now, which may or may not ever be out, um, about how I create videos. And I'm actually using this video as an example for that. So if that video is out, it'll probably be in the end card or in the description below, because obviously it's going to be a pretty cool video. Um, and I want to go ahead and show you all how I create these videos because it's a lot of work. So anyways, once again, thanks for watching. Bye.